Welcome to Quick Tips. So in um, this one, I'll show you a little suite of tools. Um, that's actually been available for a long time now. Uh, before Graphite Toolset was Graphite Toolset, it was a plugin from Max called Polyboost, and this uh, render surface map. These tools were actually in Polyboost, but they're kind of buried away here up in the the render and drop down on the render surface map. So you just pop them open there. I'll go over some of these options and what it does. So basically, it's a it's a handy little um, map baker. So uh, we've all these different maps here. Some of them you might be familiar with, such as cavity map or the AO or occlusion map. So um, this size preset drop down doesn't seem to work. So you basically just type in whatever res you want your maps to be baked at. So I'll um, I'll just put it up to. 024 for the example here and then um, the in order to use this you want to make sure your your objects an edible poly if it's an edible mesh or it has an edible an edible poly modifier in the stack it's it's not going to work so you want to make sure it's an edible poly and it has uv coordinates so in other words uvw map or um uh, much better is that we're just put an unwrap on there because you need a map channel or it won't work so if we just stick um, an unwrap on and uh, select all the faces and just simply flatten mapping and uh, that's it you know it's going to flatten out the mapping so once we've done that we can bake the stack out back to an edible poly and uh, Seam bleed here is just like padding, a UV padding. So we leave that at two. So we cavity map. So if I just click on cavity map, it's gonna pop us up a map, 1k map, same as we've set here. So this might be the best example, this particular geometry, because you know it doesn't really have any cavities, but let's say this was, um, I don't know, per character. But or any sort of a mesh with much more detail on it and um, this map is going to be more detailed to reflect that so well, it's just a, a cavity map so concave areas are going to be towards the darker end of the scale and convex areas are going to be towards the lighter end so it's a grayscale map um, you can set the contrast there then we have a density map a density map is, is um, it's a map based on the density of your topology so that the more densely packed verts are that's going to show up in white on the map and the more sparse your topology or verts you know it's going to be darker then with a dust map I'm sure you can imagine what that's used for, but uh, basically the way that works is any faces, the normals, you know, the closer they are to parallel with the z-axis, the whiter, the more towards white it's going to be, and the closer they are to perpendicular, not the z-axis or parallel to the x-y plane here, they're going to be darker, so you can imagine what it might be used for as in you know dust settling on an object it's going to settle you know on the top surfaces or you know you could use it for you know sunlight fading paint on the top or you could use snow or anything that might settle or gather on the top of an object so that's the dust map you can see here like there's the, the there's the bottom the teapot so it's completely black Here's the top, it's more or less white, you know, a bit of grey in here. So, it's a handy, a handy little map. And you know, most of these maps, obviously, there's a lot of software now, you can, you know, bake a lot of these maps. And, you know, a lot of people might bother with this, but, you know, for a really quick and dirty kind of 
you know, as I say, just throw in an unwrap UVW on, flatten map, and it's done. Click these out, there's no bacon time, you can see it just pops straight up. So, you know, it, it is a handy little little tool set. Next to the subsurface map, that's going to represent the volume of your object. So, um, you know, an area like this might be white because it's, it's thinner or, or there's less volume than, you know, the body of the teapot, say, it'll be more towards the black. So, obviously, light shining on the back and the subsurface effect is going to show up on these areas more so than these. It's not obviously 100% accurate, but you know, it can be quite handy. Then you have your, your blur, you can blur out your subsurface map there if you want. Um, occlusion map, that's a much more familiar one. It's just an AO map, an ambient occlusion map, which you know, one click, bang, it's up, it's done. Um, now this one here is uh, selection a bitmap. That just means you know any sub objects you have selected here, they'll, they'll show up as white in the map. So I select those verts. You can see there they are in the map, showing up as white. So I'll just deselect them. Now this one here is a really interesting one because um, basically I can pick any texture here and click texture wrap and it's going to wrap this object. You can tile it if you want so if you have a tiling texture, tileable texture you can use that. So it's going to wrap it but it's going to blend it. If I just put a UVW map box map on this you know it's going to project from six sides but it's going to it's going to show very visible seams um, whereas by using this it's going to blend where those planes intersect so I'll just show you a quick example I'll, um, I'll just pick a texture so uh, I'll just pick um, I'll just pick this one just for the example and then I'll hit a texture wrap and here you see it's created this map for us so um, I'll save it out here, I'll just save it here's this test so you can just save it right from here so now that's saved as a texture I'll just open the uh, material that are here and you can just go and pick that texture, apply it to your object, show it in the viewport, and we can see textures being wrapped pretty nicely around an object that wouldn't work too well with just box mapping or cylindrical or spherical or any of those generic UVW mapping methods. So, what you could do then, if you wanted to, was, um, you know, we'll say we'll choose uh, the dust map. We'll save that out. I'll just save it as AO here, because I had this saved from previous. I'll just jump into Photoshop, and I will open our texture. And then I'll open this dust map that we rendered out. Control A, Control C, Control V. Now we can just play around with our blend modes. So I'll choose a uh, overlay, bring the opacity down. Actually, I'll put the screen. Nope. soft light and I'll just um I'll just bring it back to normal for a second. And we'll, we'll change the uh change it to more of a kind of a kind of a dusty dusty colour. Like the soft light.
darken it up a bit more. It's probably not the best texture to uh, demonstrate that on, but you get the idea anyway. So uh, you know, at that end, obviously, it's you could blend it over and use it as a uh, use it as your dust map then. So that's uh, that's basically a render surface map. Handy little tool. So this is this is ran on a bit long as a so-called quick tip, but uh, hopefully you'll forgive me for that. All right, then. cheers. Thanks. Look.